In this video, we're going to talk about grids and user coordinate systems and how they can work for us within 3D mode. So before we do that, it helps that we understand what the difference is between global and local coordinate systems, because these will both come up throughout this next example. And also how we can define our own coordinate systems. We'll see how that can be done in just a minute. And once we understand that, we can then define our own grids and use the grids to lay out our model. And we've seen a bit of grid creation already, so we'll spend more time on one and two. So when we compare global and local coordinate systems, we have to think that our model itself has one global coordinate system. The global coordinate system is the reference point for every joint location within the entire model, and it doesn't have to necessarily be attached to our model in any way. Every single element in our model, whether it's a member, or a shell element or a panel will have its own local coordinate system as well. And that local coordinate system will be with respect to the orientation of that member. For an example here, if we look at an I-beam, and we say that this is the I-node on the left-hand side, where my mouse is, and the J-node is on the right-hand side, and the top flange is indicated with the arrow, then we can determine that this will be our local coordinate system, and we'll add our axis on there so we can see that the direction from I node to J node is the local X axis. The Z axis will be pointing at the top flange, and we can find the Y axis using a right hand rule. And there's reasons why we might want to use one versus the other. Global coordinate systems generally are used to represent things like joint coordinates, reactions, grids, those sorts of things. Whereas local coordinate systems are generally more related to things that reference members and their orientation. So releases, section properties, those sorts of things. And it is possible for certain uh, results and information to be presented in either the local or the global coordinate system. And there are several reasons for doing. It. Now we're going to look into SRAM here and look at an example of global and local coordinate systems. Why don't we start with looking at the local coordinate system because we've seen the global coordinate system. This is X, Y, and Z of our global coordinate system. We have a member axis orientation tool here that actually allows us to view our local coordinate system. If we left click on this tool, the data bar at the top of the screen will allow us to display our local X axis of every single member. And we can see here it's pretty small, but I can actually scale that if I wanted to. Uh, and it's going from the I node to the J node of every member. We can see the local Y and the local Z. So we know the orientation of the top flange. And we can always use this member orientation angle uh, option here to rotate the direction of our Y and Z axis relative to the member. Now by default, our grids are going to be defined in the global coordinate system's X, Y axis. And that will work for a lot of situations, but it may not always be ideal. Uh, you may remember that you can access the grids by clicking on the Edit Grids dialog, and you can click on the default grids that we already have in our model. For example, I have a one meter spacing grid, but it doesn't really line up well with the rest of my model. It's just simply not big enough. If I want to create my own grid, I can click on the Edit Grids dialog. And within this dialog here, I can go and I can uh, right click on this none folder here and I'm going to go new grid set. It's going to give me the option to create a new grid and I'm going to call this base grid. And once I'm done entering the name, I just click enter to define the grid and then I'll just left click to open this grid. Right now it's empty. You can see there's no information within the X or Y spreadsheets. But if I right click on this open grid, I can say auto generate grid set. And it's going to create a grid set for me automatically uh, that actually has located all the joints within the XY plane of my model. And it's added a grid line intersection to that location. So you can see where those are and what the spacing is. And just as before in that 2D example, I can lock the grid, uh, the joints to the grid. I can also lock the grid if I'd like. And if I want to adjust my model, I can do the same thing. I can unlock the grid and then just enter my own custom increments and press OK. And if my grid is unlocked, 
I can then start manipulating the dimensions. So I could change this size of bay if I wanted to. Now, if I wanted to have a grid at a different plane or a different elevation, I can define a user coordinate system so that my grid will be at the XY plane of that defined user coordinate system. Right below the selection tool, we have the user coordinate system or UCS tool, as I like to call it. And if we click on this to activate it, we have a few different ways to define our own user coordinate system. We can enter the origin uh, parameter, sorry, the origin coordinates of my user coordinate system. I can also define a new uh, user coordinate system by using the three point method here in the data bar. So what I can do is I can left click on this option and I can define three points. So what I'm gonna say is I wanna have a grid that lines up with the elevation of this wall here. So using the three points method here, I can click on the origin to start creating my grid orientation. So the first joint will define the new origin of my UCS. The second joint will define the positive x-axis, and I still want that to be the same, so I'm going to click this joint right here to be the second joint, which is the direction of my positive x-axis of my user coordinate system. You notice that this joint turns red. And the third joint will define the orientation of the positive y-axis. I'm going to click right here, and you can see here that the z-axis can be found using the right-hand rule. And my grid will also rotate with this because my user coordinate system is updated, so the xy plane of the user coordinate system is where the grid is. And I can save this user coordinate system if I want to use it later. So I'm just going to call this front elevation. And I click Save UCS. And now I can actually browse to that UCS by either clicking on the global coordinate system, which is our original, or our front elevation. And I can get the grid in that orientation whenever I want.